Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got the Dragonic Overlord D-Cross deck profile. So for starters, we are running the reprinted SP Conroe. So Lizard Soldier Conroe, of course OG, everyone knows this. Uh, super brand new slick art as well. And of course we had to get a Kagero SP Quick Shield for clan identity purposes. Just for flexing, you know, you don't really have to get it but it's nice. Of course, we run four copies of Dragonic Overlord the Cross. So the cross skill, real powerful. Um, once per turn, Soul Blast one. What? Then you just uh, from your deck, you put a card with Overlord in its name into your soul, and for this turn, it gains all effects of the Overlord unit. So basically, what? What's the best Overlord? Like, of course, it's the end, right? So the other skill um, is when your opponent's great Vanguard's great three or greater. Uh, your hand is always counted as 4 for your abilities so it makes perfect sense to pair this with the end right so because of the end's second ability where you can counter blast 1 to restand if you have 4 or less hand so real powerful and of course the other great 3 we're playing is 4 copies of the end just for consistency purposes where you know we don't want to be not having the end in the deck uh, we want to be like, you know, we want to have the end, basically. So, in the odd chances where you have, you've drawn all your the ends and you're unable to put back any back to the deck because, well, you did not get Tauric Cannon Dragon and uh, you run off soul. So, what do you do? Uh, let's not forget we can actually write this guy. So, yeah. That, that's just the worst case scenario, like last resort. So, let's hope we don't resort to that. And of course, the new triple R as well for grade 2, that's the searcher, Igni Road Dragon. Um, real powerful card, of course. On place VNR, you just uh, look at top 7 and what do you know? You find the cross, add it to your hand and... Is there a cost? No, you don't even discard anything, you just keep it for free, like what? And his second skill is, uh, you know, when your vanguard attacks... I think it's, uh, yeah, the second skill is on rear guard only. When your vanguard attacks, you have 4 less hand, he gets plus 5. So, insane. If you're committing early against your opponent, um, your vanguard attacks this guy like, and your 4 less hand, that's a 15k rear guard. What? And he gets, and it's not once per turn, so on your D-cross turn, on your D-cross turns, so when your D-cross attacks 3 times, this guy plus, gets plus 15k in total. Insane power, man. So, one of the new, basically it's a, this uh, new card, Toric Cannon Dragon, basically a power crap version of the Draconic Burnout. So VNR skill, another amazing Vanguard right as well. So VNR, um, once per turn, count plus one, you put a card from your drop zone back to the bottom of your deck, you retire one of your opponent's great, two or below rear guards, and you draw a card if your hand has four or less cards. So you're seeing where this goes now, right now where this whole deck um, revolves around the 4 less hand thing which is a niche thing that is from the Dragon Overlord DN set and uh, it's been uh, carried over to this set so the cross basically nullifies that it makes it so that you know we are, we are able to keep a big hand and we get to use all our 4 less hand effects because uh, this 4 less hand restriction effect is placed in fact because I mean if you don't have that effect right you don't have that restriction in place right these cards are just gonna be so damn powerful right you just commit turn one turn two you just keep that hand and then you still get a plus like what you should get punished for that man so the restriction is set in place so next up we are playing three copies of berserk dragon because berserk dragon is still a very solid og right you know that's one of the reasons why people scared to commit against kagero when they're going um, in the early stages of the games, because they know if they commit, let's say you're going first, right, as a Kyrie player, on your turn one of the opposing player, they can attack you because they are second. I mean, if they call any rear guards and they are not able to plus it back to their hand, you get a solid plus two in card economy, right? You just retire rear guard and draw one. So that's why people are. Uh, Berserk Dragon is still a very solid card because it's a target retire and it works on BNS as well. So right now we have uh, three amazing solid Vanguard rights. That's crazy. So for the last two tech slots in this deck, we are playing two copies of Decat. So Decat is really, really powerful. Um, in, I mean, even in the end days, this this card can steal you wins. And those games that are not not like not winnable, it can just help you cheese out the win. 
So the best way to use this card is when to look at your opponent's hand and you have to count the number of cards which they will require they re require to guard your Vanguard if you do use this card. So basically this card after you use it that's two cards per guard for an attack of the cross, right? So let's say your decross is hitting little already, so it, you know it's gonna hit three times. That three times is basically minimum six card guards. So if you make it so that your opponent you know you know that they have a perfect guard in your hand, right? A perfect guard is a three cards guard. Because a perfect guard they require another card for the cats um, restriction and after that perfect guard requires another card to be thrown. So real powerful. And also Toric Cannon. This card will help you recycle your DNs. So basically as long as you have a DN to Soul Blast out every turn for the cross, you never fear of running out of DN. So you can just keep looping it, it's crazy. Next up, move on to the Great Ones. Of course, every clan has got to play their Searcher. And uh, this clan is no exception. This just makes it so that it's insanely consistent to write the cross and not the end. Because uh, like nobody wants right here, right? You just scoop after that. So Lava Flow Dragon, same ability, Vienna on place. Look at top five. You find a great tree, add it to your hand and discard. So amazing! If you find the cross, great. You dip, uh, ditch a card so that you can have a card in your drop zone for Tori Cannon. Or if you find the end, ditch it. You are filtering one card from your deck, right? Because you can put the end back into the deck border as well with Tori Cannon. So. Very very strong, and the way this card gets his plus 5k ability is real simple as well. You just need to have more cards, more rear guards than your opponent, like that is so easy because most of the time, even if your opponent commits a full field, right, you retire one of their rear guards with Tori Cannon, that's it, this guy is life, you know. So we are playing four copies of Flame of Hope Ermo. This card is so good, so the reason why we still play him is I mean there's just no better options. Real powerful 11k solid booster Corbin early makes Kagiro have one of the strongest early game presence in the game. And uh, after you commit, right, if you do retire the uh, rear guards, right, you can counter charge and bounce it back to your hand. So basically, counter charging in his deck, I mean, counter using counter blast in his deck is free. So yeah, don't hold back. Kagiro is a real offensive deck, just let loose and go all out. So for the last great one, we are playing the uh, Heat Shot Dragon. I believe so. So, this is a real powerful re-stander. Um, basically, we're we playing just for re-standing ability because re uh, you get to use this, uh, you get to boost with this unit three times. So that's actually insane. And also his first ability, let's not forget, um, when you ride on the Vanguard Circle, you ditch a card and you draw a card. So you can ditch the Quick Shield, you can ditch the end, anything. You know, to anything to put a card into your drop zone because um, so that we can do a turn 2 Tori Cannon because usually right, if you don't guard you want to take that turn 1 Counter Blast for your opponent right then your drop zone will have nothing because you did not guard so by using this guy's skill right, you actually place one card in your drop zone while taking that one point of damage so you have that one Counter Blast to do Berserk Dragon or Tori Cannon to plus one amazing Okay, moving on to the trigger lineup. For draw PGs, because we can draw PG, draw PGs are amazing, and the reason why we can run for draw four draw PGs right now is because of the cross ability that makes it so that when your opponent's greater or greater, right, your hands always fall less. So it doesn't matter what hand size you have, how many cards in your hand, your hand is always considered fall less. You can always do the full effect of all your card abilities. Of course, we are playing 8 crits. You have to play 8 crits in, the deck, in this deck. You can't play lesser. You, I mean, you can play more, but I don't advise you to play any lesser than 8 crits because of the. Um, it's just the effectiveness of the restanding. Yeah, the efficiency of the restanding of your Dragoning Overlord they cross. So basically, your crit is being able to be used multiple times. Let's say you check crit on your first uh, attack of the cross, you put it with your Vanguard. You restand next two times, that crit is being used like three times. So yeah, real efficient. And of course four heals, because uh heals are real OP, right? In this deck where we do um we get like four drive checks, 
So tw twin drive, then after that second drive check, and then the third drive check. So four drive checks makes heal really good as well. Now some cards for consideration where I've seen people play in their decks are the Dragonic Sable Newt. So Sable Newt, I have tested it. Um, it's okay, but I would much rather prefer to play the Heat Shot Dragon because Sable Newt is only worth in this deck, I guess, is on its turn 1 because riding this card and placing the Elmo behind, everyone knows that there's a 19k combo where you are sure to get the plus 1 draw off the hit on the Vanguard on uh, when you're going second. So, yeah. Other than that, right, because this deck actually doesn't retire as much as other Kagiro's deck like the Blade Master build because with Torrid Cannon, right, you actually only retire once per turn. So unless you have Torrid Cannon, you actually won't really retire and sometimes your opponent doesn't give you that much Counter Blast to work with. So you are going to actually save that Counter Blast for the cross ability instead. So it's not actually as good as if you actually played it in a Blade Master deck. Next up, Dragon, full armor Dragon Buster. So, it's still real simple. Count Blast 2. Oh, wait, Soul Blast 2. I'm gonna play Soul Blast 2. We have one of your opponent's rear guards. And, uh, right, Soul Blast, right? You don't need a Count Blast. So, actually, that's pretty good. But, um, actually, Soul is pretty tight in this deck. Not gonna lie. Because you don't actually want to be right. You're actually not gonna ride your Vanguard so many times. Because you're playing Force 2. Right? So, let's say you use this guy's ability so you would be soul blasting out your 0 and 1 then when you write the cross you would only have this one card in soul then you soul blast this to put a dn inside after that you use the cross full ability to restand two twice discard three and then you drop this card out now your soul is empty so going to the next turn right if you actually don't write the cross right you actually have no more soul left so i mean if you think you're gonna get, you're gonna write the cross always in this deck. Um, after I much play testing, I, I don't think so, because you won't actually write the cross that much. You don't need to. Most of the time, the other copies of the cross will be discarded as well. Discard fodder for the ability. Well, discard three to restand and get plus ten k, right? Because you're playing force two, so you think of it as your force two, right? You you're using it three times, so. There's not much reason to rewrite it unless you really need a soul or if you're actually threatening lethal when your opponent has 4 damage then you you, uh, you can put the force 2 to one of your other side lanes because other than that, it's not, you don't really need to let's say your opponent has 3 damage you have force 2, you attack, you get a crit where do you put it to? you put it to your vanguard because you're making it lethal when it restand attack as well so yeah, there's not much real reason to rewrite in this deck and hence the reason why I don't really play full armor Dragon Buster. So that's all for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Yeah.